Hey there, Jason the Middle-Aged Gear Junkie here with you for part three of my pedal board order series. Now we've already looked at modulation, we've looked at gain, so for this episode we're going to look at everything else and we're going to do it in order from the start of the signal chain to the end. So let's get cracking. So first up, if you're running any pitch effects like a Digitech Whammy or a Harmonizer or an octave pedal, something like that, you need to be putting that at the start of your signal chain and there's a very good reason for that because these need an uninhibited signal from your guitar. When you start to introduce other things like drive pedals for example, if you had a drive pedal in front of that, the drive pedal is going to change the frequency response of your guitar signal and it, the, the pitch effects are not going to be able to work as well or as efficiently if they already have a, another effect in front of them. So put your pitch effects right at the beginning if you have them. The next type of effect I would have in my signal chain would be things like a wah or an auto wah or envelope filter. Now, for the same reason as the pitch effects, these tend to work best when they have an uninhibited signal to work with. All right, as soon as you start to introduce drive, you are taking away some of the frequency response, which means that this does not have as many frequencies to sweep than it would if it was in front. So I'll show you an example of what it sounds like before and what it sounds like after. Now a type of pedal that can throw a massive spanner in the works is a germanium fuzz. They do not play nicely with other pedals in front of them. So you can basically ignore everything I said if you're using a germanium fuzz and you're going to have to put that somewhere near the start of your signal chain. Uh, I'll show you a little clip from one of my previous videos where I tried to put a looper in front of it and it didn't really work out. <laughs> If you're running a large pedal board with a lot of tree bypass pedals, you're going to need some buffering. So typically you would put a buffer near the start of your chain because that's going to buff up your signal. It's going to replace a lot of the top end that you're going to lose downstream as you go. So uh, I use this, the uh, Boost and Buff by MIFX. Uh, this also doubles as a booster, which is a, a handy second function for this pedal. Uh, Next thing I would go into would be my tuner. Now, this particular tuner I've had for a little while uh, and I think it's inaccurate. So I'm gonna be getting rid of this and I'm gonna buy a TC uh, Polytune 3, which also has a buffer in it. So uh, I can sort of choose between which buffer I think uh, sounds better because they're not all the same. So uh, I might then choose to put this near the end of my chain uh, and have the other one at the start of the chain. Currently, what I'm doing is I have two Strymon pedals at the end of my chain, and they actually have switchable buffering. So I have the buffers on those turned on. So I buff up my signal at the start of my chain, and then I buffer it again at the end of the chain. After my tuner, my signal is going to go through my modulation effects, then into my drive section, then through some more modulation before it reaches my time-based or ambient effects delay and reverb. So it's going to hit delay first, then reverb. Now, distortion or overdrive. Uh, after these effects is going to sound drastically different than before. So I'm going to play you uh, what it sounds like when you have uh, drive in front of and then drive after delay and reverb using the exact same settings. And unlike some of our modulation uh, pedals where it might've been a subtle difference, in this case, it makes a massive difference.
After delay and reverb, that's where a lot of people will use a volume pedal. Now, having it at this point in the signal chain, what it'll do is when you take away the volume, it takes away all of the volume. It, it completely kills your signal uh, and you're able to do some really nice swells. And with reverb and delay, that sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, however, uh, if you wanted your volume pedal to take the role of, say, your volume pot on your guitar, where you can adjust the gain using a volume pedal, you would put the volume pedal at the start of your chain or closer to the start of your chain uh, in front of your drive pedals. So if you put it in front of your drive pedals, it acts like a, a guitar volume. If you put it after your drive pedals, and particularly after your delays and reverbs, you can do some awesome swell effects. So two types of effects that don't really fall in any category are compression and EQ. Now compression basically limits your dynamic range uh, and because it limits your dynamic range, it also sustains notes for longer. So having this in front of uh, say some light overdrive is a really, really handy tool. So uh, most guitar players will put this in front of their drive pedals uh, or even right at the start of their chain. Uh, personally, I put it just in front of my drive uh, and I use it with light overdrive or with clean sound. Uh, also, you can use it at the end of your drive uh, section as well, just as a smoothening out um, dynamically between your drive pedals. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily change the, um, the tonal characteristics uh, of your drive pedals by having the after. EQ on the other hand, it really depends on what you're using your EQ for. So you could use it as a global EQ, meaning that you put it at the end of your chain and then you just fix up some problem frequencies and smooth out your uh, overall tone. Uh, you could put it in front of another drive pedal and boost the mids or something like that and use it as a boost. Or you could put it at the start of your chain and boost up some of the higher frequencies and make it a buffer. So depending on what you're gonna use it for will depend on where you would place it. The last pedal we're going to look at is a looper. Now typically you would put the looper at the end of your chain before you go into your amp or into the effects loop or into a PA or wherever it's going. Here's my signal chain. We start with the wah, we go into the buffer, then into the tuner, uh, flanger and phaser, compression, and then the drive section starts. We have our color boost, uh, blues breaker style overdrive, then we have fuzz, my rhythm distortion, lead distortion up here. Now everything after this, if you were running your amp distortion, you would put into your effects loop. So that's tremolo, chorus, rotary. The reason I have my chorus after the tremolo is because the tremolo is mono and the chorus uh, splits into stereo. So this is where the stereo section begins for me. It goes stereo out of the chorus into the rotary speaker, into the delay and finishes with the reverb. So this is what it looks like all together. So that about wraps it up. I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, please try to experiment with your own pedals, see what you can come up with, and see what order you like your pedals in. Uh, I find more often than not, conventional order tends to work, but you can get some pretty cool sounds by putting them in a non-conventional order. So please, by all means, go ahead, experiment. If you already do place your pedals in a, in a strange order, please let me know what that is and, and um, tell me in the comments uh, about any particular combinations that you might use. Also, if you have any questions, put those in the comments and I'll get back to you. Um, other than that, please subscribe if you haven't already. Those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. So have a good one.